What's going on my dear friends? Today in this video, we are diving deep into the latest breaking changes and updates in Angular version 17. So let's get started. Angular has dropped another major release in its history and it has some cool breaking changes. So guys, this update is like giving your favorite superhero a brand new suit with even more superpowers. So guys, before we get started, make sure to give that like button a tap for the YouTube algorithm. Alright, so guys, first thing first, Angular has redesigned its Angular logo with a new look and feel. Not only that, Angular has released a brand new website for Angular documentation. But guys, the official Angular website is still there, but they released the new website on a separate domain that is angular.dev. So guys, compared to the old Angular official website, this one is more modern and looks awesome, right? So I, I really love this. So the coolest thing about the new Angular website is that we can now learn Angular through an online playground. It's like having this amazing option to dive into Angular in real time, making the learning process way more interactive and fun. So personally, I love this fresh vibe of the new Angular logo and this new website. The UI and UX are on point. The Angular team really worked hard on this and in my opinion, they have nailed it. Hats off to the Angular team. All right, now let's look at what's changed and what's going on with this Angular 17 update. So as usual, first they have improved the performance of Angular by making up to 90% faster runtime with built-in control flows. Now the build time is also faster by 87% than the previous. So guys, this is not something new. The Angular team has regularly worked on this to make the Angular framework faster than other competitors. I personally experienced this speed and it's good. So guys, now let's see how to update our Angular CLI to the latest Angular 17. So first thing first, update the Node.js version to the latest version. So inside the Node.js website, you guys can download the latest version and install it on your PC. So download this recommended version, not the latest version, right? So after you update the Node.js, so next uh, update the Angular CLI to the Angular CLI version 17. So nothing much here. We can just simply update this by running this command npm install dash g at angular dash CLI. So guys, this will update the Angular CLI to the current latest version. So guys, once the update is completed, we can see this dialog. So this is updated to the Angular CLI and the Angular version to the current versions, Angular 17. So now let's look at the major changes one by one. So guys, the first major change that we can see, which is this option when we generating a new Angular app, SSR, server side rendering and SSG static side rendering option, right? So if we select this, this will automatically include the server side rendering option on our Angular project. So later we don't need to do this manually after we complete our project. Uh, so now I will give this to yes. So this will generate our Angular app by including all the configurations for server side rendering or the SSR. So guys, one of the major problem that I had with the Angular previously was this server side rendering. So every time my Angular app breaks when I try to include this SSR feature on my previous Angular projects. Because of this, sometimes when developing SEO friendly static websites, I moved on to the SSR enabled frameworks like Next.js and Gatsby based on React.js. But now I can easily develop an SEO friendly website using this my favorite angular framework without any issues hmm guys who doesn't know about what is this SSR or the server side rendering this is a technique used in web development where a web server processed 
and renders the web pages on the server side before sending it to the client's browser. So most of the JavaScript frameworks including Angular use the client side rendering approach where the browser takes on the responsibility of rendering the page. With the SSR, the server sends the fully rendered HTML page to the client which can improve the initial page load performance and contribute to better search engine optimization. So for other front-end libraries like React and Swell.js, they had separate frameworks for this SSR options. But for the Angular, this SSR was a nightmare. It's very difficult to make our Angular application compatible with the SSR or the server-side rendering. Because of this, so many Angular developers left Angular. But now with the Angular 17, I think everything will be changed, right? So guys, let's open our Angular app inside the VS Code and let's run our application. Inside the integrated terminal, run this command, ng serve. So guys, this is the brand new look of our Angular app. So if I view the source code of this web page, as you guys can see, the total HTML code is rendered inside the source, right? So this total code loaded here because of the server side rendering. All right, guys, so let's move on to the next. The next major update is uh, that now Angular components are generated as a standalone components by default. Inside the app component ES file, you guys can see that by default, this set this component as a standalone component. And also if you generate a new component using the Angular CLI, and this is also by default, set this newly generated component as a standalone and you guys can notice that now we don't have an app module file. Now all the components are behaving like a standalone component and no need to use ng module imports. So guys with this, uh, the Angular gets more developer friendly and faster. If you guys do not want to use the standalone components with your Angular project, you guys can simply disable with this flag standalone false when you generate a new angular application all right so the next uh, now in angular 17 angular signals are stable in the previous versions of angular 16 angular signal is not kind of stable with every minor updates angular team updates this signal feature and sometimes it's break our application therefore i did not use these signals much on my projects and my tutorials I think hereafter we don't need to worry about this because now angular signal is stable. So those who are, don't know about this, what is this angular signal? So the angular signal is approach to manage state of a data that changes over time. Simply this is another alternative way for RxJS or reactive programming. Guys, in this I'm just want to go through about the Angular new changes and the updates. So if any of you guys don't get this, don't worry, I'll be release a full guide video about these new features in Angular 17. So stay tuned. Alright guys, I have a small announcement about my next premium course where you will learn to develop a complete Angular real world client project from scratch. So in this course, you guys will learn an update version of the Angular from scratch. You will learn TypeScript, Tailwind CSS, how to get the requirements from the clients, how to plan the project according to the client's requirements, how to price your project, how to create a project proposal, and so on. And also guys, in this course, I will teach you how I do freelancing as a web developer. And I will show you all the techniques that I use to find new clients or works. So guys, in this course, we'll develop 12 standalone applications, complete admin application, complete inventory and production management application, complete point of sale application for the retail store, complete wholesale management for the wholesale client, complete customer management and reward application, complete online e-commerce store for online sales, employee management system, income and expense accounting application, report management application, online sales management application for like eBay and Amazon, complete e-commerce application and complete e-commerce content management system. 
Actually guys, this is a project that I worked on for the past 6 months for a big clothing brand in my country. So guys, in this course, I am sharing my real world experience with you that you will never learn from an online course. This is not just a theory course, this is a totally real world practical course. Guys, I am expecting this course content will last more than 100 plus hours and I almost completed 20 plus hours of content. So guys, I am announcing a pre-sale offer for this course for a limited time. If you join this, you will get all of this knowledge just for a $6.99 and those who join to this course will receive a bonus gift which is that I will release this course in React.js with Next.js and also in Svelte.js with Svelkit.js. So with my uh, pre-sale offer, you guys will get these two courses for free. Guys, this is for a limited time and for a limited slots, this course will be released in mid of November. So guys, join now and give your support for me to add more valuable stuff to this course. So it, it's really appreciated guys. If you guys want to know more details about this course, I have released a full promotional video about this course. You can find the link in the description and also the pre-sale link also in the description. So guys, next major brand new feature that comes with the Angular 17 is the new template control flow syntax. So what is this guys? So you guys know that in order to render something inside the browser view, in Angular, we used directives like ngif, ng4, ng switch cases, and so on. So now in Angular 17, these directives are totally changed to something new, control flow. Mm, let's see this by an example. Inside our Angular app, um, I'll remove all the boilerplate codes and create an h1 tag. The heading text is something Angular 17. So guys, now I want to show a message conditionally inside the view. When the user is logged in, I want to show logged in message. Otherwise, I want to show a message saying that user is not logged in. So how do we do that? For this, uh, we need a boolean variable. So inside the component is file, I created this is logged in variable and set this value to true. Inside the view, I created a p tag with the message user logged in. So in order to show this inside the view, we can use the ngif directive, right? So I added this ngif directive to this. So next I want to show another message when the user is not logged in. So for this also I created p tag with user not logged in message. In order to show this conditionally for this also, we can use the ngif directive. So in, with this ng directive, we have to check the opposite of the is logged in variable. So for this, we can use the not operator, right? So save this all and go to the browser. Inside the browser, we can see the logged in message. Cause this is logged in variable value is true. So now I change this to false. As you guys can see here, this time this loaded the not logged in message. So guys, this is the oldest way of this logical rendering. In Angular 17, we have a new approach for this. So let's see this. So guys, for this, we can use the if control flow block, something like this. So at, at symbol and after this if brackets. So inside these brackets, we can pass the condition, which is this is logged in, right? So after this, we can create the if block scope using the curly brackets. So guys, this is uh, something like the same as JavaScript if block, right? So now inside this, we can write the HTML element that we want to render inside the browser. So I'll cut and put this p tag inside this if block. So now we no longer need this ngif directive. So so remove it. Next guys, I have to show this not logged in message when this condition is false. So for this, now in Angular 17, we have the else control flow block. Same as this if block. So after this, if scope end, at symbol and else. And after this, else block scope. So inside this, put this p tag and remove this ngif directive. That's it. 
So let's see this working or not. So inside the browser, as you guys can see here, this is working like previous. So guys, this is the new approach for conditional rendering in Angular. This approach is clean and readable, right? Angular team is trying to reduce the learning curve of Angular framework for beginners by introducing these common and JavaScript like syntax, right? So guys, like this, we have brand new control for blocks for the for loop and for the switch case as well. Guys, still, if you want, you guys can use the old directives for these conditional logics. But I recommend you guys to try to use this new approach in your future Angular projects. In the next major updates, Angular will completely remove these directives from the Angular library. So, alright, so let's move on to the next. So guys, next we have the deferable waves. This is the replacement for the lazy loading feature in Angular. So deferable waves can be used in component templates to defer the loading of select dependencies with that template. Uh, so think if we have two components and we want to render component one after component two is loaded inside the browser. For this, we can use the defer block in the Angular 17. So guys, this is also a very useful feature update in Angular. So guys, this defer block has different types of properties like placeholder, loading, error and so on. So guys, in my upcoming course, real world 12 Angular client application from scratch, I updated all the applications to Angular 17 versions and we will learn all of these new Angular features by applying them to real world scenarios. So the pre-sale is still on so if any of you guys are interested please check this out. The link is in the description. So guys that's it for this Angular 17 update tutorial. Yeah I know this is a quick small video about Angular 17 update. So stay tuned guys, I will upload another full course about Angular, including all of these new updates. So any of you guys are not subscribed to the Okta Academy, please consider subscribing. And that's it for this video. So guys, we'll meet you with another awesome video like this. Until then, learn smart, not hard.